The ATC is a dynamic belay device. The braking effect of ATC devices is based on the double bend principle, wherein their brake force is caused by the brake hand at the brake side rope alone. For belaying in sports climbing, semi-automatic belay devices due to their blocking support offer a safety advantage compared to dynamic devices. Many manufacturers provide ATC devices. ATC devices without grooves should not be used with modern ropes as they only cause a relative low brake effect with thin ropes. The brake side rope passes out of the device to the front via the brake grooves. Right handers use the right groove, left handers the left one. Using a locking carabiner, the wire loop of the ATC and the rope are inserted into the belay loop. Then the carabiner is locked. In the basic position, the brake hand is below the ATC and securely takes hold of the brake side rope. The thumb is facing the ATC, the guide hand is at the climber's end of the rope, the double bend principle is given in the home position. Taking up and paying out rope is easy now. When belaying top rope, the brake hand pulls the slack rope out of the front of the device in a bow movement, while the guide hand at the same time leads the rope to the belay device. Then the brake hand tunnels up the brake side rope back into the basic position. Thumb and index finger form a circle so that the brake hand firmly encloses the rope at all times. The brake hand always has to have full control over the rope. The braking effect of the ATC strongly depends on the position of the brake hand. The brake hand must not remain above the device line and should not be moved unnecessarily far above that line when taking up rope. The device line is the imaginary horizontal line on a level with the belay device when under load. It is more or less on a level with the sternum. In case of a fall, the brake hand takes on the climber and moves downward. Okay, two. When taking the climber, the B layer puts the rope under full load with all his body weight. The brake hand moves downward. When lowering the climber, the brake side rope passes through both hands. The guide hand and the brake hand enclose the rope below the device. The B layer lets the rope pass through the device under control. The last meters to the floor, you have to see that the landing area is clear. The challenge in lead belaying is the permanent change between paying out and taking in rope. For paying out rope, the brake hand pushes the rope towards the ATC from the bottom, while the guide hand pulls out the rope. Excessive slack rope is pulled in and the brake hand tunnels back into its home position. In case of a fall, the brake hand immediately moves downward into the home position and securely takes hold of the rope. If the brake hand is too close to the device, the skin between your thumb and index finger may be pulled into the ATC by rope passing through the device in case of a fall. There is a great danger you may reflexively let go of the brake side rope and then the rope will pass through the device at full speed. An incorrect position of the brake hand may have fatal consequences when using an ATC. If the brake hand is holding the brake side rope upside down, thumbs up, and above the device line, a fall may not be held. The reason is the missing second bend in the rope. The brake hand is in control of the brake side rope at all times and always stays below the device line. When no rope has to be paid out or taken up, the brake hand remains in its home position. This way, 
Also, an unexpected fall may be held securely.